Hey, what's up everyone? Coban Armani456 here today, um, giving you a quick news update. Well, hopefully quick, because um, for the past few days I haven't been doing news updates because I've mostly been focusing on my Let's Plays and stuff. So um, it's been kind of a while since I've done a video like this. And uh, a lot of Wii U stuff has been announced lately, which is kind of interesting because um, E3 happened late um, recently and, you know, kind of thought that we were going to be getting a lot of big news there, but actually we're getting a lot of big news continuously um, still after E3. So it hasn't slowed down or anything like that. So I'm in this video going to kind of try and catch and get you all up to date on what's been going on lately. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can cover as much as possible in a little time as possible. So there's been some info going on lately. Not sure if it's exactly a rumor or not, because um, it hasn't come from Nintendo specifically, obviously. So I guess it is kind of a rumor. But um, basically there's been a rumor going on that uh, the reason why E3 2012 didn't actually have a reveal of Retro Studios game they're working on at, um, for the Wii U was basically because right in the middle of the conference when they were in t when they were supposed to actually show the game at like the end right after Nintendo Land and everything basically Retro Studios called up Reggie fils and told him to actually cancel the whole announcement of their big game in the middle of the show so then basically um, you know the, d the d um, director or developer um, working on Nintendo Land had to basically extend his talk for that long and it was kind of a long um, a long showing of Nintendo Land where it was like longer than everything else. So it kind of was, um, you know, it kind of disappointed some people that it, um, E3's, like Nintendo's E3 didn't go out with a big bang. But um, basically, yeah, that's a rumor going on. And that uh, the game is actually supposed to be a Star Fox game that um, Retro is working on. And it's funny because uh, also there have been some recent interviews from uh, Shigeru Miyamoto and um, Reggie fils talking about how Retro is working very hard on their game. They're not ready to reveal it just yet, but um, you know they're working on a, a game currently right now for the Wii U. And uh, they're trying to get like bring a franchise back. So it could possibly actually be Star Fox. Because um, some people asked Miyamoto if the, um, Retro is working on a Zelda game, but they said... He said, no, currently, um, you know, Retro's working very um, hard on the game currently right now for the Wii U. But um, who knows, maybe in the future, Retro may actually work on a Zelda game, which would actually be a pretty awesome idea. And then also another thing that's been talked about a lot lately are the Wii U's online capabilities. And uh, in a recent interview with, I believe, the CEO of Nintendo of America, basically he confirmed that uh, the Wii U, any game that you download on the Wii U, basically you can play it on any other Wii U. So you can uh, play it at a friend house or you can buy a new Wii U or something like that and play it on that console stuff like that and the way how this actually goes is um, basically I think this basically is about Nintendo Network to where you have your own personal accounts that you can um, access on the go on your smartphone 3ds etc and um, basically you can um, log into that account on any console you want and be able to play your full game library on the Nintendo Network so I think that's actually pretty cool um, you know because it gives you um, um, it's like with digital games, I've always been hesitant to actually buy digital games, mostly because of like how you can't resell the games and stuff, but, and um, also it's usually just stuck on that system. And I like um, getting instruction booklets in the case and all that old school gaming feel. But um, with this idea actually, how you can play digital games on any console, like with the Wii U and stuff, just by logging into your account, I think that's actually a pretty cool idea. Um, you know, it makes it certainly a lot more convenient for people. And speaking of the whole idea of how you can, um, you know, access the Nintendo Network on any um, device, basically, um, you can actually download any game for your Wii U on the go, on your smartphone, tablet, PC, 3DS, etc. That's another thing that's been confirmed. Um, basically, you can do that through the Meepers. I think that's actually really cool as well. It kind of sounds a bit like Xbox Smart Glass. Also, something else um, Nintendo has basically confirmed is that how they're not going to be um, bidding for exclusive online content on their, um, you know, on their online service, I guess, Nintendo Network, to where basically, you know, with Microsoft and Sony, sometimes they um, kind of go head-to-head -head trying to get exclusive content on their system only or exclusive games only for their system. Basically, Nintendo's not going to do that. They're just going to let people decide if they actually want to bring their content to the Wii U exclusively or not. Because um, basically, Nintendo thinks that with the whole gameplay design of like the Wii U gamepad and everything else, they think that they don't really need to do that and that if people are making games for the Wii U, 
it's going to be exclusive in some form or fashion to where you know the gameplay is going to be different it's going to be unique it's probably going to be enhanced over the other versions anyway yeah also there's been a lot of talk about the Wii U's graphics lately and uh, you know recently well we've heard it from also just regular people basically saying that the Wii U's graphics looks like Xbox 360 graphics and PS3 graphics and that it doesn't really look like a next generation console and the investors have also been trying to bash Nintendo and uh, they're pretty upset right now because the game Games kind of look are basically like ports of uh, like 360 and PS3 games, and um, basically the WADA fired back saying that you know they're giving the system like they're bashing the system unfairly because if you think about it, with the Xbox 360 and PS3, the um, companies have been able to uh, perfect like get to know the hardware, the architecture of everything, and the system's power over six years. While the Wii U, it's, it's not even out yet, and people haven't had the time to develop for that system. Because if you look at the games from back then, on the Xbox 360 and PS3, they look terrible, like, compared to the today. Because if you look at games like Call of Duty 2 or Need for Speed on the um, Xbox launch titles and stuff, they are nothing compared to the games today. They look nowhere near as good. So basically, Iwata was saying, like, you know, if, you know, if developers have more time to actually work on the Wii U, they can actually make the games look a lot better than current generation consoles right now. And uh, that's currently right now, actually, developers are using about half the power of the Wii U right now. Because, as you know, we've seen like Assassin's Creed and um, other games like Mass Effect and uh, Batman Arkham City. Basically, they're just porting games. And people currently right now are making games that are just like, you know, 360, like basically identical to 360 and PS3 and just putting them onto the Wii U. So if you think about it as well, if the Wii U's first games, the first launch titles, are looking like the best 360 and PS3 games possible, just think about it in six years, how much better it's going to be. Also, another thing, um, Reggie fils had basically said in a recent interview that um, the Wii U is not all about power. That's not their primary primary focus right now. Because, um, you know, he was talking about how with the GameCube and stuff, at that time it was one of the most powerful systems. It was um, less powerful than the Xbox, but it was more powerful than the uh, PS2. Closer to pow closer in power to, like, the Xbox. And uh, basically he was talking about how you know, power isn't everything these days anyway, because they're trying. what they're trying to do right now is to make the system affordable. So if you think about it, back then, the GameCube, you kind of put this, like, use this in the, as an example. The GameCube was not the best-selling console um, at the time back then, but the Wii was actually the best-selling console of this generation. So basically it was saying, power doesn't really mean everything. It doesn't mean they're going to get more sales or anything like that, or they're going to succeed more. If you think about it, he does actually have a point, but one thing I do want to say is that the Wii U does need to be powerful so that third parties can actually be inclined to make games for the Wii U developed for that system, and uh, so that you know they can cross-platform games instead of being um, forced or like you know being forced to like actually make two different games to where one games for like the PS4 and Xbox 720, and then another games for the Wii U because the Wii U can't support um, games that are like that are going to be on the PS4 and Xbox 720. Another thing a lot of talked about how he's a bit skeptical on, um, you know, the next generation console's power. Because, um, as you all know, uh, with this generation, like this coming generation, it's not going to be a huge leap compared to the Xbox 360. And um, the Sony, like, compared to the Xbox 360 was over the Xbox or the PS3 was over the PS2. It's not going to be a huge leap like that. Um, we're going to see some differences, but, you know, our eyes are coming kind of close to the limit for exactly how much detail we can see. So it's going to basically be... Now he's basically what he's trying to say is now, like with these next generation consoles, it's going to be more about actually different gameplay styles. That's what a lot of people have been saying lately because, uh, you know, Sony and these other consoles, if they put in all this hardware that's like really, really powerful, basically they're going to have a really expensive system on their hands and, you know, some people don't want to pay that price. That's the whole thing about consoles. You get good looking games and they're powerful and the systems are powerful and all but um, they're not as expensive as PCs because PCs can cost around $1,000 or $2,000 and not everyone wants to spend that much. 
So basically, Iwata was saying, like, you know, how he's trying to keep the Wii U affordable. Like, the um, GPU that's actually in the system, it's maxed out. He confirmed that to the, to the investors. But, um, you know, they're not trying to do, like, all this... They're not trying to, like, have the best graphics or anything like that um, for the next generation. What they're trying to do is actually have something affordable so that they know that people can reach that price and not have to put invest a ton of money into some system that's like super powerful but super duper expensive as well like the PS3 back then but um, you know he wants to have um, an interesting gameplay style unique from other consoles. I have two more things before I end this video off really quickly um, basically uh, another reason why we didn't see a lot of E3 games this year mostly Nintendo fo focused on um, you know launch games like I basically said that's what Nintendo's focus was on trying to like the reason though wasn't because they didn't want to get people all hyped up or anything like you know how I said I thought that maybe Nintendo was trying to do it to where they didn't want to show all these games that people were going to have to wait three or four years for basically the reason why Nintendo did this to where they were not showing all these games is because they don't want companies stealing their ideas because they're working on these new IPs and they're working on IPs that are very popular currently right now but they're working on new IPs and they don't want these other companies taking their ideas because if you look at it and if you want to think about it think about Xbox Smart Glass just a year after Nintendo announced the Wii U last year Microsoft wants to pull something that's basically like a copycat of the Wii U though it doesn't have the capabilities because you know smartphones or what is it I mean um, tablets don't have buttons or anything like that so they're not exactly like the same experience as the Wii U gamepad but basically that's why we didn't see a lot of games that are like you know, new IPs at this E3. What Nintendo is going to do basically is try and keep that stuff close to their chest, um, kind of announce the stuff and reveal it when the time um, comes best for it to. Like, um, basically, probably around close to the game's launch or something like that, or soon um, before, like, the game's launch, to where they're going to actually reveal games. So, revealing these games. Um, like several years before they actually come out and then have some other company take their idea. So yeah, um, if you think about it, that's pretty smart because, you know, the other companies are pretty well known for actually taking Nintendo's ideas and try to, you know, make them better or something like that. And then another thing, a pretty interesting story right now, and this is the last one. Um, basically, there was a, um, an interview on Kotaku, um, the website that uh, I believe is a Japanese website or something. I can't recall what it is. Um, Basically, uh, it's a gaming website. They had an interview with Miyamoto, asked him what one of his new IPs is and uh, like what the unannounced game he's working on is. And, um, you know, basically he didn't reveal anything. But he did uh, mention that he actually wants to work on um, a first-person shooter game, but he doesn't have the time for that. And, you know, that's kind of interesting. I never did realize about it. I never did realize that about him because you know we've heard from Nintendo that uh, some of the developers and stuff have said have said that you know if all games were like first-person shooters, um, you know they would be very sad or something like that. So it's kind of interesting that he actually said he would like to work on a game like that. I think it would actually be pretty cool because it would be like a fun experience, but. It wouldn't be as gory or as crass or, you know, as all these other games that are coming out lately. Because you have to think about it. There's a lot of, like, with the video gaming industry now, people are, like, in love with violence. It's crazy. So um, I think it would be kind of, um, you know, refreshing to see what Miyamoto would actually come up with. But um, give me your opinions on what you actually think about that. Because that's kind of interesting to hear. It actually sounds like a pretty good idea. Me, personally, I'm not too fond of those kinds of games. I've never been that interested in them. But, um, you know, if Miyamoto did something like that, well, maybe I would play something like that. That would be kind of interesting. But uh, that basically does it for this video. So thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to comment, like, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more vids, walkthroughs, and updates. So be prepared for um, the first few days. Uh, like, for the c coming days and stuff, you're going to be seeing a lot of Gravity Rush for the PS Vita. Because I've been doing that Let's Play a lot. And, uh, you know, some people are pretty interested in it. And then other people are like, to continue Super Mario Galaxy 2 and stuff like that. And I will be doing that. Um, hopefully I'll have another part tomorrow sometime. Maybe around night or so. Not in the morning. I'll probably upload some Gravity Rush in the morning. But, um, you know, Super Mario Galaxy 2 sh is going to be going up tomorrow. And I'm going to start the Green Star Hunt. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that. So thanks again for watching. See you all. Have a good day.